Hello cadets, this is Warrant Officer First Class Sudo, and today I'm going to show you how to get ready in your Air Cadet uniform from head to toe. So, starting off with our collared Air Cadet shirt, make sure you have your epaulets on, also known as slip-ons, making sure that the button at the top is secure, and making sure that your two front pockets are buttoned as well. Also make sure that your shirt is free of wrinkles, and that your sleeves have nice crisp creases on them. If you are wondering how to do that, I have a video on my channel also showing you how to iron your shirt as well as your pants. What I'm going to show you next is how to wear your belt. So uh, the Air Cadet belts are adjustable to different waist sizes and the way to adjust that is by looking at the back of your clasp. So when you first get it, it's probably going to be closer up to the front, probably like right here. So it's going to be a little harder to undo the clasp. So what you can do, you can take something thin um, like a knife to help pry it open. And once those jaws are open, you can slide it up and down the length of your belt to secure it in a place that works for you. So I'm just going to close that where it is right there. And when you wear your belt, thread it in starting from the left side. So going from right to the left, right? So start on your first left belt loop, right? And make sure you don't miss any of your loops. Sorry, give me a moment. Right, and once it's threaded through, then you can thread it through the buckle and then draw the bar up to secure it. So you wanna be able to wear your cadet belt so it is snug around your waist. So I need to tighten it a little bit more. So if I, do, if I need to do that, I can just grab this side, pull it open, right, move the clasp, Close it again and then secure it. As now that your belt is secure, that little rectangular piece at the end of your belt should be poking out on the left side of your belt clasp. All right, you should be able to touch it and hear it hit the metal. All right, and that's what we call brass on brass. So um, making sure that the end of your belt is in line with the end of your belt clasp rather than being uh, too far over to the side. So next I'm gonna show you how to tie your tie. In cadets, we use this knot called the double Windsor knot. So I will show you very quickly how to tie that. So first make sure your top button of your cadet shirt is done up. If you're unable to, it's not a huge deal. Just make sure that no one can see it. All right, and once that is done, keep your collar up. Sorry, my hair is stuck. All right, and you're gonna want to drape your tie around your neck so that there is one longer end and one shorter end. Depending on how long your tie is, this may differ. So I'm just going to move it so we have about like two thirds or more, maybe like a little more than two thirds on the side with the thicker end and a little less on the side that has the thinner end. So first thing, we're going to use this side as our working end, all right? So uh, we're gonna be building upon this end using the thicker side, all right? So first things first, you're going to cross the thicker end over, all right? just once and you can hold it there with your hand. You can hold that cross, all right? So using your other hand, you're going to want to push the working end up through in between your neck and that little sort of cross you created, right? And position the working end to whichever side it naturally falls on, all right? So now with that same thick working end, you're going to go horizontally across the back. So now that is, it is on the opposite side. You're gonna do the same thing, putting it through that gap that you made between your neck and the tie, all right? And pull it through. And right here, you should be able to get a uh, knot that kind of looks like a V, right? That's sort of even on both sides, as you can see. So make sure you're keeping good tension throughout the process. All right, so now that we have that little V, now what we're gonna do is take that working end and cross it horizontally over to cover up that V. All right, and now we're gonna push it through in that gap once again. Then we are going to feed it through. So now we have to create sort of a gap. So when we just crossed it horizontally over, we have to separate that from the knot. So now we have a loop in our tie. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that working end and thread it through that loop that we just created. So make sure your tie doesn't crease. So fold out all the creases once we get there. All right, and once you get a knot that looks like this, pretty much on your way. So you can pull out the sides to give it more of a triangular shape and you can pull the thick working end down to tighten the knot. 
All right. And now with the end that we built on, so the really small end, if we pull that down towards the ground while moving the knot upwards towards our neck, that is going to tighten our tie around our neck and bring it up. All right. And once it's secure and snug, fold your collar back down and move your knot up so you can adjust it as needed. All right. And that is how we do our tie. Now, taking a look at our tunic, you'll also notice that there are epaulets on the shoulders as well for your slip-ons. Um, however, they are not for your slip-ons. Uh, they are only used on certain occasions, um, for example, like promotions on parade. Um, but usually, you will not be wearing anything on the outside epaulets of your tunic. All right, so putting on our tunic, we only button it up to the second last one on the top. So start out with that, I would say, making sure your collar is above your epaulets on your shoulders. All right, so keep the top button open. Sorry, just let me fix my tie. All right, and buttoning it down. So next, taking our belt, uh, the end of the belt should also sit on the left side just the same way that the belt did on our pants. So um, whenever we thread the uh, center belt on our tunic, thread it from the left going out on the right and making sure that it's facing the right way. So when we tighten it, we want the belt clasp to be aligned with our, um, with our buttons, right? Down the center and then just thread it through onto the other side so tighten it so it's secure all right and if you can see that there are creases where the belt um kind of gathers your uh fabric of your tunic what you can do is you can take the front two loops of your tunic pull them outwards and then the back two loops you can pull them towards each other all right and now for the back, we do um, something called a ducktail, and this is just to make uh, the gathered fabric look a little more clean. So kind of find two places to make a fold, right, to make a pleat. Hold them, push them forward, pull them out, right, and then just follow those pleats down on the rest of your uniform, on your tunic, if that makes sense. Right, and then just kind of sort of flare it out as you get to the bottom. I hope that looks good. All right, and then you can just pull it down. So that way it creates a nice sort of even, clean looking um, back of your uniform. All right, so now for some of the things that you would um, adorn your uniform with. Uh, for your name tag, make sure that it is level uh, and flush with your right um, front pocket, right? making sure that it is centered. You can use the sort of uh, buttonhole to kind of align it. Um, any sort of lapels, one from uh, competitions, will be worn on the left side in the middle of that sort of band that you see on your front pocket. So it'll be centered from this sort of perspective. So like not including the top of the pocket. Um, your shoulder flashes, which bear the name of our squadron, uh, will be sewn onto your shoulders on either side, like so, about two fingers distance from the seam of your shoulder. And make sure that the curvature is even with the rest of the curvature of the top of your shoulder. And make sure they are also centered. Uh, I would recommend stitching um, either on the other side of the outside border or directly on the border, depending on how strong your sewing skills are. Um, yeah, so just always be careful when you're sewing. For achievement badges that are on your sleeve, always start with the center one first. So for example, um, these are the ones from my summer training courses. So this is on my right side, right? So the very first one is from general training. So that was my first course. So that goes on the center of my sleeve, right? So if you kind of just stick your hand out forward, right? You can see that's centered with the rest of my hand, right? The second badge that you earn is going to go on the inside, like so, 
for me, this is the left side of that. So uh, this would be the side that's closer to the inside of my body, right? That is your second badge. And your third badge goes on the other side, right? On the outside of your uh, first earned badge, right? All of them are aligned so that the bottom is completely flush with the uh, edge of your sleeve, of sort of that cuff, right? And it's the same thing for the other side. So um, here are some other uh, sort of achievement badges. So uh, for example, this is fitness and this is music. And then above that is your level achievement badge, right? So this tells me I earned this one first, right? Because it's in the center. And since this one is closer to the inside on the other side, that means I earned this one second. And achievement badges are going to be going on the left sleeve as well, about uh, half a centimeter above the first earned badge. So it's also in the center. For ranks, they would be placed uh, about midway between your shoulder and your elbow. So to demonstrate, I have just some of my old uh, flight sergeant ranks. So if you stick your arm straight down, make sure you're aligning it so it's centered with your shoulder flash and it should be about equal distance from your elbow and from your shoulder. So maybe this one goes a little bit higher. All right, and your ranks will go on both shoulders. And now, if you are wearing pins or medals with your uniform, make sure that the bottom of the pins or medal is flush with the top edge of your right pocket and place your name tag above it about uh, half a centimeter above. So there's a bit of space in between. And always make sure that your uniform is free of lint, free of any sort of residue and uh, wrinkles. So you can iron your tunic. Most people don't really do it that often, but if you notice there's like severe wrinkles or creases like in fabrics or parts of it where there shouldn't be, you feel free to give it sort of a light once over, um, but there should not be creases in your tunic. All right, so wearing it as is, that's how it should appear. All right, so it's always a good idea before a big parade to use a lint roller or a lint brush to remove any excess lint. Uh, make sure you're checking your badges to make sure that there are no loose threads um, sticking out of it, making sure that there's no loose threads sticking out in your uniform. If you do see them, you can use a nail clipper to um, very carefully cut them and trim them. Or if you're really feeling brave, you can take a flame from a lighter and since it is polyester, it will burn and it will be able to um, you know, become more flush with the rest of the fabric, but be careful because of course this is polyester and you can burn your uniform. So always be careful. And of course we can't forget our wedge. So a good way to put on your wedge is by taking your thumb and your middle finger, right? And threading them through the two little pockets that are at the front of your wedge. All right. And that way you can position it more delicately atop your head. So you're going to want to wear your wedge so the side with the badge is slightly higher and elevated compared to the side that doesn't. All right. So that means on your right side, you should have three fingers distance from the edge of your wedge to the tip of your ear. And on the other side, on your right side, there should be about four fingers distance. Between your eyebrows and the bottom of the wedge, there should be about two fingers. And make sure that the pins or the buttons are aligned with your nose bridge so that they are centered. All right, and that is how to put together your uniform. Let me show you how to put on your shoes. So with our cadet boots, we always wanna make sure we are wearing our gray cadet socks. That should be given to you. Um, your boots, of course, should be nice and freshly polished. All right, so slipping our boots on. Remember, we're using the straight lace method. So uh, every other lace is going to tighten uh, the one that it's connected to basically. So just tighten them so that they are secure on your feet. All right, and once you get to that top thread, I just do a double knot. You can do uh, whichever knot fits you best. Maybe I'll do something like that for today. All right, and what you're gonna wanna do, hike up your pant leg and fold it over once, right? Pull it up a bit so that it's aligned with the edge of your boot, and then you can fold it over again. So that way it can hide your lace and just make for, you know, a cleaner look. So it's kind of rare that you'll ever see that, but it's just something nice to have. So do the same with the other boot. And yeah, that is how to put together your cadet uniform. 
I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to share it with the rest of your cadet friends. And yeah, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.